right, we are going to be in the book of Acts. And for those of us that were at the Bible study or that heard the Bible study, we were in Acts on Wednesday. And so we're going to do a little continuation on Wednesday. Um, we were in Acts 20, um, and we're going to move over to Acts 21. But um, on Wednesday, we talked about Paul and <clears throat> using his example the question that I asked everyone was, what matters to you? I mean, we read that in Paul 20, I mean, in Acts 20, 24, that as um, Paul was a great man, we you know the story that he came from a man who was an atheist to a man who, as I say, was, became the head Christian. He wanted to kill Christians, and he became the head Christian. Yeah. Christian. And um, which is just awesome in of itself. And his life throughout Acts, it, it shows us from Acts 9 through the end of Acts of what he went through. Um, he was sold out for Christ. He gave up everything for Christ. He gave up all his thoughts. He surrendered it all. And through that, um, <clears throat> he went on several uh, missionary journeys. And so in Acts 20, what we read on um, Wednesday was that it was his time to go to Jerusalem. He had just been in Ephesus for three years and um, it was time for him to move on. And so he had a meeting with the elders, kind of hit, and he said a farewell speech to them. And in his farewell speech to them, he was reminding them and encouraging them of all the things that they did together in those three years. He was reminding them that although he was leaving them, God wasn't leaving them, and that he was that God was still going to be with them. And he was kind of giving them that encouragement that like you can do this. I know I've been here with you, but you can do this. And through it. He, um, he, he told them, he said, God is sending me to Jerusalem. I don't know what's going to happen there. But what I do know, what the Holy Spirit has told me, is that there's going to be hardships and imprisonment. And although they were going to be sad about it, he's like, that doesn't, I don't give any thought to that. And so we talked about what really matters. What matters is that for him, what mattered for Peter, I mean for Paul, is that he had a task. His task was to complete the race of testifying the good news of the gospel of God. And so, um, so of course, so after he tells them this, and after he gives their speech as we continue on, they were sad. They didn't want to see him go, and so they weeped and they cried, and um, Luke, who's the author, the way he describes it, he says, after we had to pull ourselves away from them, we kept going, which I can just imagine, like this embrace, and they're like, no, don't leave, we need you. But Paul had his mind focused. What mattered to him is finishing the race. And so they get on board, and they continue on, um, on the ship, and <laughs> they take several, they stop several more places, until they finally um, get to verse 13. So let's look at verse 13 in, in the 21st chapter <coughs> of Acts. And so before we read there, so what happens is that they go to one place, and um, when they go there, they meet with the disciples, and the disciples have have already heard from the Holy Spirit, they've seen, and so they know that Paul is about to go through trial. And they're like, please don't go. They're starting to beg him not to go. And Paul's like, no, sorry, I gotta go. And he keeps going. Then they get to another um, place in Caesarea, and when they got there, he met with an evangelist. And the evangelist is like, look here, I've seen it. I've seen the vision, and this is what's gonna happen to you. So um, we're actually going to start in verse 10, and it says, and it reads, After we have been there a num number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it, and said, The Holy Spirit says, in this way, the Jews of Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there pleaded Paul with Paul not to go to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, and this is our focus, verse 13. Paul answered, why are you weeping and breaking my heart? 
I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. When he would not be dissuaded, we gave up and said, the Lord's will be done. So today our message is willing to die. Willing to die. And so we see in verse 13 that Paul was a man who was willing to die. And so when I um, think about what it means to be a person who is willing to die, not just to die because they want, they want to end their life, but he was a man who was willing to die for Christ. And it reminds me of Christian martyrs. And there have been many in the Bible. Stephen was one of the more prominent first ones in, earlier in Acts who was stoned to death because he was willing to stand there and proclaim God. And so a Christian martyr is someone who died for his or her faith rather than renounce Christ. And so when you hear the word willing to, willing to die, what we're talking about is willing to die for Christ. Not just willing to die, but willing to die for Christ. And so when we look at the people and examples of people who were willing to die for Christ, we notice that although they were tortured, although they endured so much, it was because they had a belief in their minds that if they remain faithful, if they continued that they to death, they knew that they would actually and eventually live forever and ever. Because God promises us that this world, that there's an eternal life that is at stake for us, for those who believe and continue who are faithful. So we're looking, we're talking about a posture of being faithful. We're talking about a posture of belief. We're talking about taking up our cross daily with God, what Jesus told us to do every single day. And um, so today, I want us to look at um, why is it that we should be willing to die? And a lot of times the body of Christ, we kind of, we kind of have it backwards. Because a lot of times we get to that point where, yes, I'll be willing to stand up for Christ. Yes, I'll be willing after we've done so many things. We're like, we think of it as being the pinnacle of discipleship. We think that, wow, when you've gotten to a point where you're willing to die, that's when you're really a disciple. But, in, but the contrary, Jesus says that we're supposed to take up our cross daily. So in actuality, being willing to die for Christ is the beginning of discipleship which is why we're talking about growth. It's the beginning. And so I was like, wow, when God showed me that, I'm like, I feel like I've been, you know, um, and, uh, guilty of that. Because I like think about like our pastors or ones I'm like, wow, they would definitely, I see them as being willing to die. And I'm always in my mind, subconsciously it's been like, oh, I can't wait to get to that point. Right. But God is like, no, you won't get to that point until you start it now. Yeah. We have to, in order for us to be true disciples, we have to be willing to die now. That's how you become a disciple. You don't become a disciple and then be willing. You'll be willing to die as a disciple. And so today I want to encourage us with three words um, and ways that we can get to a point of being ready for discipleship, where we would get to a point for be willing, of being willing to die for Christ. You ready for those three words? Yes. Let, live, and love. Let, live, and love. So the first word, let. Let go of ourselves. We have to let go of ourselves as we're willing to die for Christ. Meaning, and we know, we've been talking about this, letting go of what? We've been talking, our thoughts, and our wills, and our mind, and our ways, and um, we have to be willing to die to our flesh. So these are things that we've already heard before, that we have to, and or it's, it's, it's critical. When you think about Paul, and what he did in his life, and him being at that point where he was like, listen here, and here they are, all these people, he had the disciples, his people, his leaders, the elders, 
They're trying to dissuade him from getting to where he knows he has to go because they're afraid. Because they haven't completely let go. And he's like, look here, as much as I love you, i got to let go of this relationship. Because I got something else that matters to me. So we even have to let go of relationships, even the ones that seem good. Even the ones that were like, but this is my, this could be my prayer partner, or this is my pastor, or this is a minister, or this is a mentor. But sometimes, even those people, because they don't hear the same way that we hear. We, they don't hear what God has told us. God tells each and every one of us individually. And even the closest one won't be able to have your same path. So here, he has his elders and his leaders and the people around him because they didn't want to let him go, they were trying to stop him from doing what he needed to do. But we have to get to a point where it doesn't matter who says it, what said. We listen to God and we have to be willing to let go of all of that. Be willing to let go of all of our thoughts of how we thought it was supposed to happen. And just freely, just really being like jello. And just being wiggly and being able to move and wherever he needs to go. And so many times we're so uptight. We're so stiff when we do things. We're so stiff when we come into work or we go into the grocery store because we're too busy thinking about, I got to do this instead of just being and just being free. Paul, I just imagine like during that time when you think about Jesus and Paul, like it was just like a, a stroll, like, yes, hello, how are you doing? You know, like they were looking for opportunity. Who can I bless? Who can I encourage today? Who can I just give a word to and say, you know what, you are so beautiful. Oh my goodness, that is so awesome. I love whatever, whenever you see people, just giving them compliments. They, we have to be willing to just let it go and just be for Christ. The second one is to live. How should we live? We should live boldly. And when I think about this one and encouraging and living boldly, when we're talking about willing to die for Christ, I think for me and for some of us, <coughs> the first thought that would come to mind is like a dramatic scene. Like you're somewhere, like you know, we think about those things that have events that have happened. If someone comes to the door or if someone holds a gun to me, am I going to be willing to die and say, yes, I believe you, Jesus? But we're talking about, that's the surface. Deeper, being willing to die for Christ is in our actions. Mm -hmm. How you live your life. Is your life willing to die for Christ? And you said it, Jermaine, you talked about Noah. Noah was a man whose life was willing to die for Jesus, for God at the time. He was willing to die for God because he was willing to be alone. He was willing to just, when everybody looking at it, and I love the movie where it's like, um, what is the movie? God Almighty. Emmy Almighty, yeah. Where, I mean, they kind of, you know, do like a fun thing about it. But like, that's what Cutter probably was. Like, he's walking around, he's like, it's going to flood. And people are like, you are tripping. But being willing to die for Christ means that you're willing to live boldly and you're willing to look stupid when everybody else is telling you something else. But because you know what God has told you, you're going to walk boldly. So if God says, go down the street and pray for five people, you're not going to, oh, no, think of it. You're going to, all right, Lord, let me walk down the street and let me see what you got me, what you want me to say. Or if you're like, I've heard of stories of, you know, Preachers that said that they've been at the store and they heard God say, bless this person right here. Living boldly is like, you know what? Even if that person is cursing and talking about God is crazy, then I'm going to be willing to die and go up to them and say, listen here, God told me to tell you this and not be afraid. Living, being willing to die for Christ is living boldly, standing firm, being unshakable and unmoved no matter what. And so many times we're like, Oh, depending on who I'm with, maybe I'll talk about God here, maybe I won't. But being willing to die for Christ means that you're going to say whatever you need to say whenever you got to say it because you are about it for the Lord, <laughs> no matter what. Because you remember the reason. And because you remember the reason, because a lot of times we're afraid to say things because we think someone else, or we're, we're, we're thinking about what they're going to say to us. Oh, are they going to hate me for this? Are they going to say, are they going to reject it? But God tells us in John that remember that when they reject you, they're not really rejecting you. They're rejecting me. And God's like, so don't worry about it because it has nothing to do with you. They hate me because I'm 
the good in this world and they're trying to keep because they don't want to face it so we have to remember that and be bold and it really in order to really be bold is because you have to believe it so we got to check our beliefs yeah. do we really believe that the gospel says that we will have eternal life or are we still trying to hold on to our life but again mark 8 tells us that you got to be willing to lose a life in order to gain a life we have to remember that and actually believe it and really sit with ourselves because if you feel like if there's something that you haven't let go, maybe deep down inside you're really not believing it. Right. And so we have to be bold and we have to believe. We have to um, think eternally, not about this temporal. We know we're, our mind, Paul's mind, was to finish the task because he knew eternally that there was something greater. He was willing to be bound. So here this prophet is trying to be all, you know, a lot of times when you get a revelation for somebody else, you're like, look, if you're trying to convince them, he takes off his belt, and he's like, they're going to bind you. And Paul's like, I don't care. That's fine. Because you know what? I, I'm ready to be bound. Because if I'm bound, I'm bound for Christ. If I die, I die for Christ. So it doesn't matter. And going back, because he's like, it doesn't matter. That matters little to me. What matters is that I finish this race, that I finish this task. I got to tell them people in Jerusalem how good God is. I got to show them. I got to, you know, I got for them to see. They need to see who I am so they can see for themselves because they've been hearing. Who's this man that used to persecute the Christian? Now he's claiming he's a Christian. What's up with that? So he's like, I got to show them. So I don't care. Whatever I got to do to get over there, if they got to bound me up, it's okay. And the great thing about it is when, when you read on the, uh, the next chapters, it's like when they when they imprisoned him, they imprisoned him with his own little house. Like, he was like, you know, so it's like even, and you know, you think like, how is he able to write all those letters? Because he was, I mean, he was prison, but he was kind of free. Because God set him up for it. So his imprisonment didn't look like other people's imprisonment because God needed him to be there so that he can do the things that he needed him to do. And we have to know that when God, even when God wants to send us through something hard, it's really not going to be hard because he's given us everything to do to walk through that hardness. So when you think about if God is telling us to walk on um, walk on fire, it's like God really has given us a shoe, his, his hand to put under our foot to walk through the fire. And that's what he did with Paul. He's like, you're going to be bound up, but I'm going to be there. It's going to feel good because I'm with you and because you're choosing to have joy through it all. Because you're choosing and you're knowing, hmm, I'm sitting here. What can I do? Let me write some letters to my people and encourage them. So that way they know that God is still with them. Let me do this. So he found the joy in it all. And we have to realize that hardship doesn't really mean hardship. Yeah, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. But he's with us. And when he's with us, nothing is impossible. And we have to believe that. The third thing is that we have to love like God. So to die or deny for Christ. Our love for God should take us as far as God loves for us took him, which was to death. Loving like God. God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him shouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. He loved us so much that he was willing to come to this earth. Jesus was willing to come to allow himself to be man, to die for us. So if he could do that for us, why can't we do that for him? Yeah. We have to love like God loved us. We have to be an example of love for other people. How did Christ love? He loved other people. How to love God? God says love me and love, love others. Love your neighbors. Do whatever it is that they need you to do. We have to be willing to step outside of our comfort zone into any situation that God may place us in. We have to be willing to do whatever it is that we need to do. We have to be willing to just say whatever it is that we need to say. We have to be willing to really do it for Christ because Christ did it for us. That's our ultimate thank you to him. That's our ultimate payback for him. 
and to just do what he did for us, to love like God loves. <coughs> we cannot allow ourselves to shrink from a chance to serve God. We can't allow ourselves to shrink from a time that God is showing us that we're going to be bound. We cannot shrink from a chance to really allow God to use us because this is what we're created for. We're created for his purpose. We're created to do what it is that he needs us to do. We have to be willing to let go. We have to be willing to live boldly. And we have to be willing to love like God loved us. Because being willing to die for Jesus is just simply the result of really believing and thanking him for all that he's done for us. <coughs> Amen? Amen. Amen? Short and sweet today. Yes, God. Any questions, comments? Concerns? No, this was our time. Like, it's been a super like emotional week for me. Well, we all know that normally at that time of the month, everything is super extra. Um, <clears throat> two, two. Huh? Two. Oh, you got daughters. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know, you like. <laughs> you have joined the fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, um, and it's just that hormonal imbalance already. Yeah. And it just magnifies everything time like a thousand, it seems like. Um, I just had a really rough day on Wednesday, just emotionally, and God, God used this time to expose a lot of stuff. Um, things that I swept under the rug, things that I was like, oh, okay, I'm not tripping off that. But I was in hindsight and didn't know. Um, and at, when I got home, I just decided that I, I was like, I know you heard me venting, so I'm going to trust that you heard me. Mm -hmm. But I need, I need your help with this. And because of that, um, Shane and I have um, beta thalassemia, which is a form of anemia that white blood, white blood cell count is really high and energy is super low. Not that you guys would be able to tell, but <laughs> energy is low. So that mixed with that time is like I'm losing and it's just like I have, it's like, oh my gosh, like I can't move sometimes, I'm really tired. And then I, I was like, I've been, I told you, man, I was like, babe, I'm, I can't move. And he was just like, don't worry about it, I'll go. And then I had sat up really slow, and then my phone pinged, which is random because it doesn't do that. And then I looked at the verse of the day, and it said, do not conform. <laughs> and I just said, let me get my butt up. So that's when I came, like, I got to, like, we got to push past it. Dying is just in the fact that, yes, although things are flowing, He's replenishing, and I just and we just gotta handle this business. Like, let's not, let's just not, yeah. and let's just do. Like, that's how. You know, that this was a great reminder. Like, don't conform. Like, we serve a God who can do anything that we can even think of. So it's just trusting and believing in that, and walking boldly in who He's called us to be, no matter how we feel. What matters most to yeah. you, and it's just having some. Yeah, it's been a trying few days, but God is still holy. He's awesome. He's faithful, and He's just, and He's the same always. Absolutely. I'm just the one to be switching it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And what I heard and said about comfort, we want to hold on to comfort a lot of time. Well, most comfort is a joy. Yeah, it's an illusion. Yeah, and it's an illusion. But we got to be willing to give up comfort. And so that's what the, when the disciples and, and all of the people that were around Paul, they didn't want him to be uncomfortable. So that's what they were like, no, they're going to do this to you and they're going to prison you. And we got to let go of wanting to be comfortable. We have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Remember the yoga instructor, Jillian Michaels, on her, what she say? <laughs> you gotta learn to be uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think about that. It's like, when you want the result, you think about even working out. Like, when you want that, you have to, you're not gonna get those results by being, make it being easy. It's not, yeah. it's gonna have to be hard. You're gonna have to have some pain, no pain, no gain. And it's the same thing with the Lord. No pain, no gain. We gotta let go of being being comfortable. Yes, um, when you were talking about um, like uh, like of course dying for Christ, um, and Dana started talking. What what came to me was 
I'm not even gonna say the process, in the steps mm -hmm. after death, the body still does things, it still functions. It still, you may let out a last breath, you may fart, you may move an arm. So there are steps to death. So we can't, you know, just can't get hung up on my arm. That arm just moved because you're supposed to be dead. It's kind of like, it's going to happen. As it happens, let it happen and move on. That's that's the last step, move forward on to the next one. Your toe twinkles, hey, all right, we see that it's twinkling. Let's move, let's move on forward from that step. So I was like, because the Lord is just setting some things up. And I'm like, ooh, we. I'm excited. Yes. I'm excited. Yes, Jay. Well, you said something. You said uh, hardship is not hardship. And that's, that's uh, especially in God, because that's what he's going to use to really show you what kind of character you've got. Mm -hmm. And I remember years ago, just, you know, first coming to this thing, you know, a lot of people said, man, you ain't really, you ain't growing yet because you ain't had no pain. I understand what they were saying. And it's like, you know, when you really, uh, when God is really more than shaping you, like, that's what he's going to use to really show you what he really is, really. Not just for you, for other people. Mm -hmm. And you were saying how, like, you know, you know, the prophet came to Paul and they know what's going on, and they were trying to oppose him. But he was like, man, this is what I gotta do mm -hmm. for your benefit. But it, yeah. and that's the whole thing about that. It's, it's not about us. Mm -hmm. Wherever we go through, God's gonna use that for somebody else. Yeah. And it's kind of really like uh, the way I grew up with this. It's kind of like really precious. Kind of like man, you better not fold. Because if you fold, people see you fold. It's like your life is gonna be over. Mm -hmm. And and like what's gonna happen is you know everybody run on top of you. So it, it's kind of really like you know. That mindset is like it's you got to have it no matter what. Yeah. First, it's gonna make you, or it's gonna break you. You know, so it, it's, it's and like no matter like early you talking about the work situation, some work situations are, are stressful, but you know if, if you got a mindset that no matter what you're gonna get through this, it, it's it's gonna be a great thing. But uh, that uncomfortability, or that's what's gonna help you really change though. Mm -hmm. It's easier said than done. The person can say, but when you actually go through it, you really can see yeah. that it was necessary for you to grow. Mm -hmm. I look back and say, well, man, I don't know how I got through that stuff, but it wasn't up with God, you know? Yeah. Man, I didn't want to go through it. I said I wanted to grow, but, you know, when the pain come, when I, I had to stand in it. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I'm like, man, I was, that was some hard stuff, but it's like, now I came out rejoicing. So that's the whole thing about when people talk about they believers, man, you know. Tell me the bad stuff, man. <laughs> right. I'm just saying, because, I mean, it, 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 it ain't all good. I mean, it is all good, but right. it ain't all good. But, yeah. Tell me something that you overcame. Right. You know, so it, it's because that's what's going to help, you know. And like a lot of people, you got to be able to tell people the truth. Yeah. Yeah, I've been in God, but I, I experienced this. But God can't. And, like, that's what we, uh, that's the real gospel. Cause other stuff they preach, that's not it's not the real thing, but it's kind of like Jesus, he went through something, mm -hmm. he had to endure, so we got to endure. And the Bible says, He who endure to the end shall be saved. Yeah. So there's some stuff that's going to come our way, but uh, we got to be encouraged to be a good chief, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I think something you said earlier when you said, Now we got to live like tomorrow's not promised, that part. I live like today is the last day. Uh, but but why, why though? Well, why, why do you think I live like that? That's, 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 not a, good, yeah, that's a good point. Because I, what I say that for is because a lot of times we're waiting to do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're always, we you know, so when we're presented, like for me, I know when I'm presented with something, I'm like, maybe I can do it. Well, I don't know if I feel like it today. Yeah. Let me do mm -hmm. it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, maybe I'm really tired today. Mm -hmm. So, like, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, next time I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And then that prevents us from really being bold because then we allow fear to creep in. And so living boldly and living like tomorrow is like every time you have a chance, you're going to say it. You're going to get it done mm -hmm. and you're going to live. And so, and not waiting for the next time, but instead of like, this is my moment mm -hmm. right now. 
I'm going to have a moment. I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to have a moment. I'm going to be in my car. I'm going to have a moment to praise God and, and talk to him. Or, or we're so busy that we're just like, okay, and it'll get done later. Or I'll go, but it's like, no, we're supposed to pray without ceasing. And that's been, and, and I've been having such a challenge with like being at, being back at work. And then I'm like so busy. And then it'll come like, I'll get in the car and I'm like, Lord, I didn't pray to you today. Like, I know you're with me, but I'm like, man, like, I was yeah. so busy, like, attending to other people. And I'm like, Lord, help me with that. But just even those little things of, like, how right now, not waiting until tonight, not waiting until 2 o'clock, but right now, what can I do right now? Because because we think that it's going to come. Right. Oh, I'm alive, and I know it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like, Procrastination is tied question. to that illusion of time. Yeah. Like the fact that you feel like, oh, I have time to get it right, or I have time, or I have time. But if you live in every day like today is the last, then you know it's now. Yeah. So again, step into that. If it's now, then it's now. You want a well done at the end of every day. Mm -hmm. Not like, oh, okay, when I get there, yeah. right. I'm here with no, it's a well done at the end of every day. Yeah. So, which is, so again, being willing to die right now, now. not right. wait until I get to the point where I know all these scriptures and I'm here and I'm doing, <laughs> no, we're going to die right now for yeah. what you know. Do you yeah. believe that yeah. God yeah. and that Jesus died for us and that there's eternal life? And that's all you need and was die for that. It's also arrogance, too, though. Mm. It's saying. It's that one on that. Arrogance, of course, with the illusion of time, and arrogance in knowledge, mm -hmm. thinking that you know more mm -hmm. than you actually do. When the Word of God clearly says that the Holy Spirit reveals all that truth. Yeah. And um, it's just the human, it's human nature to be arrogant yeah. about what you know yeah. instead of being humble about what you know yeah. and sharing it. I was having a conversation with a coworker who is a motivational speaker and you know with youth and all this other stuff and met God. And we decided that we he decided, you know, he wanted to get into a conversation with me regarding the future. Mm -hmm. He was like, So what do you what does what does God want you to do with it? He's gonna, what do you want to do with this? He has what do I want to do with it, whatever God has called me to do. And I said, whatever he wants me to do with it is what I'm going to do with it. If it's death to the gospel, it's death to the I mean not death to the gospel, death to self to bring life to the gospel. So be it. And he was like, but don't you think God tells everybody what he wants them to do? I said, that all depends on who you are and what, what you can and cannot handle. He was like, what do you mean? I was like, we're talking about death for Christ. I said, the Lord told Jonah exactly what he wanted him to do. And what did Jonah do? He ran. He ran. I said, so I think that's arrogant of man to think that we know what God is doing. We can assume all day. But without complete death and knowledge and guidance from the Holy Spirit, we are... We have no knowledge, and the Bible says a people without knowledge, or, well, people without knowledge, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. Yeah, yeah. And the stressful part is the ones who actually have the information to give are choking on the information because they're thinking that it's them who's coming out with it. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Choking on the information. <laughs> now, ooh, that's good. I was talking to a co worker yesterday, and we were talking about someone, oh, we were talking about someone who died recently who I didn't met, who I hadn't met, but their legacy is very present in the offices. And I just said, wow, what is gonna be our legacy? And I think that this is really key to that because if we were to die tomorrow, what would people say about us? Would they say that you were like Paul and you were sold out, you willing to die for Christ? Or would they just know the side of you that never talked about Christ or never mm -hmm. exemplified that? I think That's it's so good. important that even in looking at what, um, even looking at what the idea of that tomorrow you're not, yes, we know that we're not promised tomorrow, but also look at what is the legacy. I think Paul's legacy is very clear. I think, well, first of all, anybody that's in the Bible, you got a legacy. God, <laughs> Clearly. Pretty God, much. God said, pretty you know what? I'm going to put you in the eternal world. <laughs> that's a manuscript. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your legacy. Good, bad, and different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but wow. it's good because I'm like, wow, what is, what is your legacy? And I think Paul has clearly shown us, you know, that he... And saying I'm willing to die for this, 
what, what an incredible legacy for us to look at. And I mean, obviously Jesus has the ultimate legacy. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that was an interesting thought. I'm reminded when Pastor Kyle was talking about a beautiful death. Um, and when she was talking about how she said, when, you know, in order for when seeds are thrown on the ground, in order for the plants to grow, the seeds have to die. Mm -hmm. So Paul's death literally, like, would have had everybody like, oh, let's get it. Because when Jesus died, it changed the world. And Jesus, Jesus had a beautiful death. And it's just like, and that did when Malcolm was talking about legacy and Shane talking about the arrogance of time and this one was talking about the illusion and all that. It's like, dang, we really thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to right now. And it's just like, if if God decided to take me in life, will my death be beautiful or will it be in vain? Will I have not will I have buried the talents that he gave me, or will we have multiplied them in his name? What would I have done? What will like what is it? Just bad I'm like, I'm trying to think about it, but then it's like, I mean, live on, let go, let it go, give up yourself, and let's get this and just love like there's no tomorrow, love like you've never been hurt before. Considering that Christ does it every day when He gives us brand new grace and mercy when we wake up. Yeah, a lot of little nuggets. Yes. Yeah, this is interesting because, like, so this morning I was I was looking on YouTube. I was looking at Wooden Houston funeral, and like everything everybody's talking about. That's what the pastor was saying. Like, like you know, man, think he's all knowing. I mean, think we got to think I just didn't figure it out, you know. But uh, like Mama was saying, the legacy. He was saying how like uh, her last days, the stuff she was doing, and I begin to think about that, man. Like, what you know, when it's all said and done, what are they gonna say about you? I mean, that, that's really something, because they're going to say what they're going to say anyway. But, you know, uh, people really care what people say, but I, I guess to a degree, but I say, you know what, man, you know, it got to be, you know, you got to make a change. Because the way he was living, you don't want that to be, you don't want that to be the last word, you know what I mean? And I began to think about that, and it really, really helped me to, to do some soul search and really see, man, you know what, it got to be, uh, you know, you dedicated to God. That's really because don't know nothing mean them really. When you look at everything else, I mean, you spend your life, your lifespan, you know, trying to accumulate possessions and like accolades, man, that stuff, that stuff doesn't really mean them to God, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I begin to look at that, man, begin to look at like how, I know a lot of people that lost their life pursuing these things. Mm -hmm. And it's frivolous. Mm -hmm. You really look and say, man, it ain't really worth it. But like you said, God got to give you the insight about that. I mean, some people think they got it, but you know, if you got it, you know, you're gonna be humble. You know that you know that you're not without God. And I think that's the uh that's one of the beginning of, of having knowledge and knowing that I ain't know without God. He got all knowledge. Yeah. Because everybody got all this this stuff on it, man. I said, look, man, you ain't got you, you ain't got nothing. You know, so like that's what I kind of focus on. That's what that's what the legacy is really about. It's about being a man dedicated to God and but everything else is gonna be diminished. Because in God's eyes, that's all he's concerned about. When you stand before him, I mean, what, what can you say, really? Ain't no excuse. Yeah. So that's kind of really something that I really, that stuff really pierced. I said, man, that's, what they really going to say? You know, the preacher said, listen, man, this, this ain't how he was living. Yeah. He wasn't no good. He was scandalous. Let's talk about that. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe that's going to help somebody else get it right. right. And so that's kind of some of everything we're talking about. This morning, it was all in a message. Just like, you know, time, thinking, you know, so this, this is definitely a blessing. You know, it's, it's kind of really like, a, well, when you look at Paul's life, it's like, man, he was just, man, it, it was just, it wasn't the fact that he was radical after Christ. He was radical before Christ. Right. So it wasn't just, that was just his no. <laughs> <laughs> He just changed right. what he was radical for. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so that was who he was. And, and I began to think, excellent. <laughs> But, but and maybe that's why focus. God knew he could use him so mm -hmm. right? Because he was. And he wasn't somebody that was scared. He yeah. was somebody you gonna change. <laughs> and, and I think a lot of times, you know, God, we get saved, but our personality is still the same. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. some people may be a little stubborn. Mm -hmm. they, they might be a little overzealous. But still keep that, though. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's kind of like a thing that wears, though, you know, who you are is who you are. 
But when you add God to the equation, mm -hmm. it's gonna be something totally different, mm -hmm. you know. So it's it's a uh, it's definitely a good thing, you know. Mm -hmm. How he was persecuted and beaten and jailed and all the things he went through and i don't have the exact scripture to give you but he refers to it as light and momentary mm -hmm. and when we go through things we never see it as light and momentary. like oh my god oh my god <laughs> 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 Ooh, that's, that's but for in his own words he, he referred to it as light and momentary and if you see it as light and momentary, being able to die each day to whatever it is or whatever it, someone said, it's just like momentary. It's a snapshot in time. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I know. I had to write that one down. Yeah. <laughs>